Apple has a history of inventing things people didn't know they needed. But in 2016, one of these products wasn't featured in their advertisements. A small dongle that seemed entirely superfluous. But the guys behind the Genius Bar had found a way to make it necessary. Some people have asked why we would remove the analog headphone jack from the iPhone. Offering no improvements in fidelity or convenience, they claimed courage. Courage. Asking us to accept the logic that because technology is old, it must be obsolete. I mean, it's been with us a really long time. In reality, they abandoned a cable with global adoption and unmatched interoperability in favor of proprietary headphones that don't even work on an Apple laptop. This decision isn't about courage, it's about making your old stuff obsolete. The 3.5 millimeter phono jack is profound in its ubiquity and longevity. During a century of electronics defined by rapid obsolescence, the headphone jack outlived many of the technologies it connected. There's no other cable found in every country and so many different electronics going back to the 19th century. The original quarter inch version was invented in the 1870s for telephone switchboard operators to conveniently connect phone calls. Their jobs were eventually replaced by robots, but the phone jack was so good at transferring audio signal that it became adopted into audio uses of all kinds. Speakers evolved more slowly, but in 1925, a winning technology emerged, the electromagnetic loudspeaker, an invention that became so successful we can safely assume you are listening to this using one. All speakers have three critical components, a flexible cone attached to a copper coil encircling a permanently fixed magnet. As electrical current travels through the coil, it becomes magnetic reacting against the fixed magnet, moving the cone which pushes air. These changes in magnetism occur hundreds of times per second, vibrating the cone precisely to recreate sound. The phone jack enabled the easy transfer of electrical current which controls speaker movement. But it was kind of big. In the 1950s, pocket-sized radios made music portable, and with them came the ultra-portable 3.5 millimeter version everyone knows today. A miniature version of the original concept, both versions have the same tip sleeve or TS configuration, the tip sending electrical current to the speaker and the sleeve connecting to the ground. In the 1970s, a ring was added, tip ring sleeve, for a second audio channel enabling stereo, and eventually another ring, tip ring ring sleeve for an input such as a microphone. For the first century, audio was analog, preserved in ways that change continuously. The grooves in vinyl, or the magnetic patterns in tape, or the curves in a radio wave, were perfect analogs for electrical current which recreate the curves in sound waves. All of that changed in 1983 when CDs introduced digital audio to the mass market. But as music went digital, the analog headphone jack became more ubiquitous than ever. Digital files do not change continuously. They're either one or zero. But speakers never stopped being analog, and nobody cares because they sound great. So to transition between binary to an analog waveform, digital audio files transcode a series of points clocked at regular intervals to approximate the curve. For this, you need a dedicated piece of circuitry called a digital to analog converter, or DAC. Even in the absence of a headphone jack, smartphones have DACs for their speakers, and also analog to digital converters for microphones, usually packed into the same chip. As a rule for digital audio, every speaker needs to be physically connected to a DAC. In the 1980s, digital circuitry was bulky and expensive. It only made sense to put the DAC inside of the CD player. So there was no reason to replace the headphone jack as music went digital. Since the 80s, DACs have become tiny and cheap. They can be packaged inside of wireless headphones or at the end of a cable. 
it is these small, discreetly packaged DACs that allow Apple to remove the headphone jack from the iPhone. So when Apple dismisses your existing headphones as old analog devices. Well, there are people in the world who do have some analog old connected devices out there. So we've also made this. They're taking advantage of what you don't understand to get you to buy new stuff. Wireless. Wireless headphones also use analog speakers, but the journey to reach those speakers is much more complex than a cable. First, the devices have to successfully pair. Then the music data is packetized and transmitted on a crowded spectrum of radio shared with Wi-Fi and other electronics. To manage interference, Bluetooth uses a strategy called Adaptive Frequency Hopping Spread Spectrum Radio, which sends one data packet over one frequency and then hops to a different frequency to transmit the next packet, adapting to avoid the busiest frequencies. The logic is that if interference is encountered, the damage is limited to a single packet, so the interruption is so short that a listener may not even notice. But this comes with a trade-off. By hopping around to so many different channels, single encounters of interference become much more likely. So the system favors frequent glitches that are individually hard to notice. Instead of long interruptions that occur less often, data that is received intact is then sent to the onboard DAC, amplified, and finally the speaker. In addition, wireless headphones need their own power supply. Each of these steps adds uncertainty to the entire system and makes it difficult for wireless audio to maintain the same fidelity of a cable. Apple knows that by designing all the hardware and software, they can make wireless audio work more reliably than their competitors, and they've spent billions developing it. They really want you to buy it. Apple isn't selling as many phones as they used to. If they want to compete in emerging markets, maybe they should increase the interoperability of their phones rather than making them more reliant on proprietary accessories. Use USB-C instead of a lightning connector. It's just as good and is poised for the same, if not much greater, interoperability as the headphone jack. And since the iPhone replaced portable audio devices, not having the headphone jack makes phones less useful. Put the headphone jack back in to select models and market it to consumers who love music. Call it the iPhone DJ. The headphone jack isn't dead. It's proven to be resilient against obsolescence for 150 years. And Apple cannot kill it by inventing this. But they can create inconvenience and waste. Thanks for watching Astro's videos. We are a new channel in 2019 dedicated to making scientific videos, dedicated to trying to make you smarter. If you really like it, please subscribe and share the video with your friends or your family.